It's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. And so we're going through my monthly figure drawing purge. I'm going through all of the figure drawings that I went through in the, uh, that I did in figure drawing class during the month of July and picking out the ones that I'm going to keep for my blog and picking out some that I'm going to save that did not come out well to do some studies for later on and show you how I go about in later videos, I'll show you how I go about analyzing those drawings and learning from them. Uh, so for now, let's start at the top of the uh, the stack. This one is from, uh, this whole set should be from uh, Carl Ganas' class on costume and draped figure. I do like this particular one. It's pretty rare for me to get a drawing that feels like a sense of completion in class. And now that I look at it, I realize there's a reason why. This drawing is a study of this drawing that's up here. A lot of times the model will do a drawing in class, it will do, take a pose in class and I just don't get it. And then like I, it just does not come out well, I don't draw quick enough, for whatever reason it's very incomplete and not well done. And when the model is on a break, I will sit there and I will do a study. And if the break is long enough, because sometimes our structure instructor will lecture a bit during the, the break, I can actually get something that feels pretty finished. So this one, and again, the point of these is not to be masterpiece drawings or paintings, they're studies. And in this case, the point is to study how drapery hangs from the body, how it wraps around the body, describes what's happening. And I was able to figure out a lot of the uh, the problems I just did not get in this first one. So I think I'll probably keep maybe, maybe post these two poses. In fact, both of these are studies of the drawings above them. So keep those. The studies, rather. I probably won't post the um, the original drawings. I just really don't think those count too well. This one's not bad. I think I might keep this one. The rest of these are all pretty patchy. Um, this is something that I've been struggling a lot with in this particular section, this particular series of classes. Is that, you know, when you're drawing the uh, the, the, the figure model, let me see, I don't think any of these will go on the blog. These just don't really, very, very indistinct. Um, when you're drawing a model that is clothed, the challenge is that you have a whole lot more to draw. Not necessarily a whole lot more, but you've got more shapes. You have to think about how the clothing wraps around the figure. And I find that I'm just drawing too slow and I'm trying to get too much in there. So. For me, it's a matter of not simplifying, but distilling it down to what is the essence. In this one, I feel like what's going on in the torso, I got a good section there. Even though it's not finished, the model's wearing a hat and the hat's barely described there, I still feel like this one captures what was going on in that moment. And that's really how I'm deciding whether to keep these drawings for the blog. It's not necessarily, is this a good drawing? Is it a bad drawing? It's, it's more of the question of, is there something interesting going on? And was I able to get that down on the page? Again, this one I'm pretty happy with. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're in a figure drawing class, some instructors like warm-ups, some instructors don't necessarily believe in warm-ups. But it is true that as you go on and you're working for a while, you pick up some steam, you kind of get a sense of where you're going, you start learning how to optimize, and you're learning from your mistakes, not just over a period of time, but even in the session of one class. Over the course of one class, you can learn what you're doing wrong and have a sense of, oh wait, I'm putting too much detail here, not enough detail here, spending too much time on this. Um, sometimes I need to sit down and just do a study of a part of anatomy. Anatomy still holds me up a lot because sometimes if I'm trying to draw the model but I don't have a good sense of what their body is doing beneath the clothes, then there's no way to properly describe what's gonna be happening on the clothed figure. So sometimes when I should be studying drapery, I'm spending a lot of time just working out the anatomy of the pose, and that happens. But that's part of the process, is learning, oh, there's things I need to study even more and become better at so that I can apply that knowledge to other aspects of figure drawing or, or illustration study. Um, this one I like and I'll keep for the uh, I'll keep for the blog. The one above has some nice character to it, but I don't think it's necessarily particularly, it's expressive, but it doesn't really, doesn't have that special something that makes you say, oh, this is something other people would want to look at. 
Um, this one I'm on the fence with, which means I probably won't post it. Let's see here. These are all coming off of my drawing board, so they're all flipped away and flipped around in various uh, various angles. This is one where the model started out in um, doing nude poses before going into costume. And there's a couple of nice figure poses in here. Maybe I'll take this one. Let's see here. Now, what's interesting is I make it a point to not post notes that my instructor has put on here because that's his intellectual property. He has his own YouTube channel. It's uh, I think it's Carl Ganass Studios on YouTube. But I do make a lot of notes for myself, things that I'm trying to figure out and study and learn. And on this particular page, I had a night where everything was going wrong. Like just none of the drawings were coming out well. They felt, they felt like way out of proportion which proportion continues to be one of my my weaker suits. If I don't pay attention to it, the drawings become very wonky and out of proportion very quickly. Taking a sip of tea here. Um, so I made a whole bunch of notes about what I'm doing wrong in terms of proportion. And really, this is one of those things where I realize, I know these things already. I've heard other art instructors say them. I've seen them in many art books. The idea of measuring, seeing where things line up, like, you know, where does the the front of the head line up in proportion to the elbow? Where does the the top of the knee line up in terms of the other side of the figure with the hip on the far side? Where does the shoulder blade line up with the top of the hip? Mo measuring across, up, down, and through the figure. And these are things that if you do it all the time, for years and years and years, it becomes instinctual. The same way that like someone who's been driving for any more than like a couple of years doesn't really think about driving a car anymore. It becomes instinctual. But, you know, when you're first starting to do it, you need to build that up. And you would think for the number of years I've been drawing, studying both from the figure and just working on my own, I would have those proportions set in my head and that exercise of measuring across the figure. But I don't. I don't have it instinctually memorized, internalized. So I still have to think about it and tell myself to do it. And it's important to get into that habit now because the sooner I can get into the habit of it, the sooner I can stop thinking about it, the sooner I have to stop making a point to tell myself to do it. And then I can focus on what I'm trying to, on what I'm trying to express as opposed to just the basic vocabulary of drawing. Um, you would think somebody who's been figure drawing for over a decade wouldn't need to do that anymore but I still do. I'm one of those people who, if I let myself slip up for a minute or stop, you know, it's like somebody who, who if they stop dieting for a minute, gains a whole bunch of weight or stop working out and they lose all their muscle tone. That's how I am with figure drawing. The minute I stop paying attention to the fundamentals, they go real wonky. So I always need to remind myself to do it. All right, um, other notes I made myself was to go back and forth between fast and slow because sometimes I, when I realize that I'm not catching everything I need to in a figure drawing session, I'm like, well, I need to draw faster. And I start drawing faster and the drawings come out sloppier. So what I'm telling myself is now is to alternate. So I'll do a full pose figure and try to get everything. And then I'll do some poses where I'm just trying to get just a particular portion, an arm, a sleeve, a leg, a torso, and just work on the details of that. So just go back and forth between focusing on learning and then focus on trying to capture the pose in total. Um, interestingly enough, I feel like these two are very incomplete drawings, but I feel like I really like the gesture that I got down. The fact that we had the model for this night was a guy named John Mackey. He's a great um, model. If you've done any figure drawing in LA, you've had it at some point. Um, all of the models that we work from are great, but he gives a lot of great character poses and just it's kind of a ham. So I think maybe I'll put these two pieces in, but I don't think I'll put the middle one in. The middle one, just I didn't get that the, the real sense of character. It just feels sort of a little boring and stagnant. Let's see here. Mm, no, no. This one, I don't know if I'll, you know what, I'll pull it aside. This one would probably be good for a, uh, 
doing my figure drawing nightmares, going back or figure drawing disasters and just redrawing. This one really did not come out well, even though it should have had a lot of character to it. Um, this one I think I will post because it's not a great drawing, but it's very simple in terms of its expression of volumes and anatomy and getting the sense of overlap between the different uh, body parts. Um, and that's what I'm striving for. So again, this is one of the things where it's not about it being a great drawing, but it's about being a descriptive drawing because I'm trying to learn how to describe better. Um, good drawings are for the finished work, whether it's a art print and a painting or a comic book. The studies are for description, for learning, for increasing my vocabulary. Um, let's see, I think I'll put this one because this one just feels like it's got a little bit more interesting things going on in terms of the pose. The other one, you know, it's a more complete drawing. You can actually know the legs are finished, you know, and you can actually see his boots to some, well, they're just silhouettes of boots, but they're still there. Point being is that this one feels like it's got a little bit more to say. Interestingly enough, I was having trouble trying to describe the lace on the cuff, it's kind of a pirate costume, and I did a pretty poor lace study here. But this is one of those things where I'm realizing, oh, I'm gonna need to get better at also capturing these small details in a simple, direct way, as opposed to sitting there and fussing and doing what would be like a photorealistic rendering to make it look like what it actually is. So that's something I gotta keep in mind. All right, let's see. I like this pose. This one goes in. You know, both of these, Eh, this one, the sleeve has folds in it, but they're they're a mishmash. They're garbled. I'm just sort of pretending to say something without actually saying anything. They could be more descriptive. I think this one falls down on it a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll let this one pass. But I'll this one I think I'll put in the blog. Let's see here. You know, and it's not necessarily fair, but I feel like I give credence or a little bit more weight to drawings that have cats in them. <laughs> um, that have darker lines. It just it gives the illusion or mentally it feels like it's more finished if the lines are darker as opposed to the really light sketches. So I'm also trying to pay attention to which ones are well done, but very light in their treatment. Um... These have some personality expression to them. I think I'll put both of these in. Maybe photograph them and keep them in one shot and then it'll be one image on the blog post. Let's see. And these two, I am probably, I could have done a better job of describing the, the folds, the way that the cloth is draping from the knee down the pant leg. But other than that, these two I'm actually pretty happy with, and I'm generally not happy with my figure drawing classwork. So yeah, these will go in. You know, this is another interesting thing because most of the time when I'm in class, I remember myself as being extremely unhappy with most of the drawings. So those drawings must have been longer poses, probably um, like 10, po 10 minute, maybe 15. Um, they couldn't have been fives, which we've been doing a lot of fives in class, and that's what I've been struggling with. But um, they've been feeling, you know, now in retrospect, going back and reviewing, looking at these, a lot of these came out better than I remember. I can still pick out problems, like the fact that this drawing feels pretty good, pretty finished, and yet up here where the fabric bunches around the knee, I know what it's supposed to be, but it's it's more it's less about it bunching up around the knee than it bunching up at the top, tucking into the boot. I know what it's supposed to be conveying. It looks nothing like what it's supposed to be. That said, I'll put this one in the blog because it feels like a pretty nice drawing overall. But these are the kind of things that I try to be aware of and that I make a point of. Um, maybe if I remember when I do my next breakdown of drawings and analyzing them, I'll work on it would be tough to do a study of just this knee because this is one where I would probably would need to have a photograph of the way the model's boots looked in the time at the time I was doing it. Making it up out of my head is probably not going to work well. So it's either that or trying to find similar boots and pant. I don't have any pants that are this flowy and pirate pantsy. So 
that wouldn't necessarily work. But um, let's see here. And again, making little notes on the page for things that I already know but should be doing and tell myself that in 30 seconds I need to just try and get a stick figure in and then after that. This is something that has made a big difference in class. I make the whole figure drawing process a lot more complicated than it needs to be because I'm thinking about all of the anatomy and the volume, the light and the tone and, and all of these things. Um, sip of uh, tea real quick. All these things that I need to do and I realize that I'm making it harder on myself because much like with writing, it's a lot easier to edit a bad story. By the way, I'm gonna put both of these in the, uh, the blog. It's much easier to edit a bad story than to write something and turn it into something good than it is to write a brilliant story right out of your head. The same thing with figure drawings. You can start with a very poor rough sketch and then slowly build it up and fix it, move the anatomy, move the proportions, change it until it looks like what it's supposed to. And not only can you do that just with a long figure drawing study, but even if you're just sitting there in front of a model and you've got like a five, eight minute pose, you can sit there and make a crappy full size sketch in 30, I almost look at it like my job is to try and make a crappy version of everything in 30 seconds or you know less than a minute and then spend all the rest of the time fixing the drawing. So a lot of the stuff that I do when I'm doing my, my figure drawing repairs and figure drawing autopsy, I'm usually trying to do that in real time in class and I found that the results are starting to become better. Um, I like the sense of drapery I got on this skirt. The costume, the model had a really nice costume on. Um, you know, really simple street clothes but a very nice descriptive flowy skirt. So. I'm just gonna say yes to this page. I may break it up into two different you know, posts, break it into two different images, but I'm pretty happy with how that one came out. There's a lot that's going in here that I didn't think was gonna go in here. Cause I remember in my, the, in the past month, I remember having a really hard time in class and I really felt like, wow, a lot of these drawings are just horrible. I mentioned that before, but it's odd to me looking at these now and seeing how many that I do wanna post. Cause a lot of them I was just like, oh, this, Garbage, everything sucks, I should give up. And by the way, we all feel that way about our artwork. So when you feel that way, it's okay. You can go on, you have permission to keep drawing and keep studying and learning. I did not give up, I did not walk away just because I've had many nights in a row that felt like garbage. Just, it's natural. In fact, it means that you're critical of your work and it's important to be critical of your own work, but you want to use it in a constructive way. That's the point of constructive criticism. You don't want to just say, oh, my stuff sucks. You want to say, all right, how can I use my shortcomings? How can I learn from them and improve on them? Um, this one I'm gonna post specifically because of what I said earlier about me giving credence to drawings that have darker lines or more finished. This drawing, even though you know you really didn't get her feet in it or her shoes, and there's no face on most of my figure drawing classes, class drawings, but this one feels more finished just because of the sense of the darker lines. But this one has a nice flow to it and you can see the, the under form of the figure underneath. And she was kind of like sliding. I didn't get the sense of her sliding the jacket off of her shoulder, but this one is a very light figure drawing, but it feels like it communicates. So I'm gonna, and I specifically just like getting the sense of the, the, the drapery right in here of the, the jacket coming off of her hips. So I'm gonna put that one in and probably this one too. I'm surprised, I was ready to come in in hater mode. Um, maybe it's because of this. A lot of these, these are drawings that have that hard line like they're supposed to be more finished but feel to me very, very wonky. I do like this one and how I got the sense of the, the zigging and zagging of the, the folds around her elbow. But overall, a lot of these are ones where I feel like I've put down hard lines but the proportions are a little bit wonky and it's a thing where I'm pretending to describe something even though I'm not. I think the only one out of this bunch that I'll put in is just this one over here, which when I photograph it, you'll end up getting a bunch of the rest of the drawing in there. The rest of them I'm not particularly happy with. Um, this page, yeah, I, uh, I really like this dress. This was one of those where it was very hard to draw because it had a lot of detail to it. It's kind of like a flapper style dress and uh, sipping the tea. 
Um, a lot of detail. It took me most of the time of doing this pose. This was one of the ones where, well, you'll see the other drawings, but this was the one that I think got closest to actually describing what the dress looked and felt like. I struggled for a while to figure out how to depict it. This one I'm not going to post, but what's interesting about it is I was doing that act of trying to describe folds almost as if they were like veins. Like you've got the one tube that makes up the, the overall shape of the arm, then you've got these pipes, these tubes on top of them, which are the folds wrapping around. They're just, they're, they're smaller volumes that are going across the contour of the form. The problem is that they're not, they're descriptive in the sense that they're volumes. They're not descriptive in the sense of them being accurate in describing the under form. Um, they just don't bunch up around the elbow in the way that feels convincing, that really conveys the understructure. This might have been one of those where I was trying to draw what I saw instead of, instead of drawing what I know and maybe manipulating the folds a little bit more to feel more like the joint of an elbow feeling around. So I'm not gonna put it in there, but I'm just pointing it out because this is an interesting, it's a near miss is what it is. It's me trying to go for something, failing, but learning from that failure. And that's the important thing about figure drawing. For anyone who's afraid to go to figure drawing classes, doesn't want to do it, says, oh, I suck at figure drawing classes, you should go. You should go and you should be okay with doing crappy drawings. The point of figure drawing classes is that it's all about the near miss. It's about trying to do something you can't do and failing over and over again, at, but seeing how you can learn from these failures and how you can get closer to doing things you couldn't do before. Um, I like to joke that it's almost like, like being in therapy. Figure drawing class is a safe space. It's a place to where it's okay to be a bad artist. Um, yeah, I might put all of these in. I don't know what I was thinking over the, the past couple of weeks. I'm much happier with these drawings, looking at them now, than I was at the time I was drawing them. And that's kind of the inverse, because usually I like something right after I finish drawing it, and the longer I live with it, the more I hate it. And this is just the reverse effect. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put any of the drawings in here, but I will point out that this is one where, let me slide it down a little bit, make sure you can see it. This is one of those where I did my first pose, and I guess the model took a break, at, not first pose the night, but I did this pose up here, the model took a break and I realized I, what I spent a long time doing was that she was doing something very simple. It's not like this is a difficult pose, but I spent so much time trying to convey that subtle curve and the um, her, defining her upper torso versus her pelvis and how her, you know, how, the, the rhythm of how the, the dress moves along her body and the rhythm of basically her silhouette. And then I did this smaller study to try and understand where I was falling down and failing. And this is one of those things that I want to, this is the, the, the type of stuff where I say, I want to get better doing this instinctually, because if I can do this very, very quickly without having to think about it very hard, then I can spend all of my time on the, uh, the surface details, the polish, all of that. It's like having a movie and saying, all right, if we make the script as strong as possible, make the story really dynamic and interesting with characters that you care about, with hopes, and dreams, you become attached to them and thing, things happen to them and it's heartbroken. If you make, if on top of that you throw a whole bunch of sci-fi spectacle or special effects and stunts or a horror movie, you can throw all of that polish on top and put a lot of attention to it if that understructure is solid. And that same analogy for filmmaking, if the story is strong then you can add whatever you want on top of it within reason. I think it applies to figure drawing, that if you can get these basic understructure elements down, then you can put whatever style you want on it, whatever type of line work, you can do it in paint, in ink, um, in crayon, doesn't matter. Um, if you get that nice expressive stuff down. I think in this one, this one isn't going in either, but I did feel like the way that the arm and the gesture here, and what's going on with this, the, the leg and the, the raised knee, I was channeling a little bit of Adam Hughes, or at least trying to. I don't think I was trying to do it consciously, but in looking at it now, I see something that reminds me of like the beautiful Mooka like gestures that that Adam Hughes has in a lot of his his drawings. I'm surprised looking at the pile, I have way more drawings going in than 
than not going in. And that is unusual for me because I've been coming pickier, or at least I thought it was. Um, the only drawing on this page that I like really is this one. I do like her foot here, but it's like I drew her leg like it's broken. This is just bad anatomy here. Um, this really should have been a little bit straighter and then just having the curve of the muscle on the the inside of the calf stick out a little bit more and have it a little bit further down. Instead, it's just like, someone broke her, you know, broke her tibia. Um, all right, so this one will go in, the rest not so much. Um, again, me doing studies of a, of a pose. You know, this is the pose that the model was taking. This is me trying to say, all right, well, what did I get wrong? Um, the fabric, I think, came out straighter. Maybe there was a little bit more curve to it, but she had a really nice posture of her hands dropping and carrying it. Like this is one, I think, it would have been a nice drawing if I had had time this to get more of the detail down. This would have been a nice one that I could make a painting out of. Like a nice Gil Elvgren style, you know, really painterly lush with a nice expression in the sunglasses. If I could have gotten all the details down, it could have been the basis of a nice painting. Um, this one could be the basis of a nice painting, even though I don't, you know, she doesn't have a hand, I could make up something. Um, so this one will go in, the other ones won't. This, these are actually fixes. These are uh, me doing, like, as I've said, studies where, I think I may have already posted these online, but these couple of drawings, this was after I came back from a night that was I was having a lot of trouble, but over the course of the night, I started figuring out, oh, I really need to just simplify and relax and get down to the essence. And it was one of those nights where I just wanted to stay home, and not stay home, but I got home from class and then just wanted to draw some more. And I think I didn't do it the night of class. I think maybe the next night, I just sat up on the patio with uh, my drawing board and just drew for a while. Let me see if I can find I'm skipping ahead. You know what? I'll keep going. I'm going to set these aside and then I'm going to bring them back out when I get to the drawings that relate to them. So, all right. Kind of like this pose and this pose, you know, got some of the detail in the arm there. Um, this one's not a bad drawing, but it's a little bit on the boring side, so maybe I'll just take those uh, those other two. Let's see, very unfinished. Yeah, you know, not bad study of the uh, the pants drapery. Maybe I'll take this one. I don't know. The head is so tiny. Eh, this is me trying to fix a drawing and making what is arguably an even worse drawing. <laughs> it happens. And again, head way, way out of proportion. He was wearing a baggy suit, with, which threw off my proportions a bit, but that's no excuse. This is just abysmal. Let's see. And one of the things I did remember here, and um, I'm trying to remember what book it was, because it was a book on architecture and anatomy. Not architecture and anatomy, it was just on um, architecture and environment. But they talked about how a lot of artists who aren't figure drawing illustrators will, when they want to indicate a human being in a, a background, they may come in and add a little bit more detail, but they'll start by just drawing an upside down U and then putting a head on it. And then you just add arms. And you can come in there and say, all right, well, you know, hips are about halfway through. But it's a very long, upside down U with a head on top. And that's a very simple way to block in figures. And I realized I can use this in figure drawing class as a way to just start figuring out what I'm doing there. Let's say that the model, like let's say I'm 
I'm doing this guy standing here and I want to get that pose. I can just say, all right, there's my ground plane. I mean, it's different because he's got one leg behind the other, but let's say I just do like a... Something kind of like a U. In reality, and then I can still say, all right, hip's going to be in here. I can draw off of that U. One knee forward, one leg, foot back. Um, you know, and then place the head and the arms. That head should be further back. You know, that's, that's neither here nor there. The point being is I'm not going to post this one because these are bad drawings, but upside down U with a ball on top for poses that don't have a lot of overlap, it can be a very simple way to start figuring out how I want to pose this figure. The one that's here to the right is much more appropriate to that. I don't know why I started with that one. Um, but yeah, if you were just going to say, all right, he's leaning back, just a U that's leaning that way. And then from there, you just say, all right, pelvis, head, one foot forward, the other one back a little bit, arm is right by the lapel, other arm is kind of holding out, I think he was holding out a dollar bill or something in his costume, some rich guy taunting somebody poor and this is the thing where once you've got this you can start saying all right let me fix my proportions let me add in my volumes let me make it look like a rib cage spine pelvis I hope that this isn't so tiny that you can't see it um, you can start adding these things to a simple stick figure like this so just something I'm tossing in there. It wasn't even something I was planning to talk about, but I saw this, made me think about it. Oh, this is what made me think about it. I make drawings in my on my figure drawings that are notes, because all of this is a journal. It's a, it's a study journal. The drawings that I feel have information that I really need to keep, I make sure that I scan those and save that. I've got like a whole folder full of like just figure drawing notes. All right, here we go. Um, and again, speaking of notes, I was telling myself that I need to measure the distance from limb to limb. Um, in terms of saying, all right, well, how far apart is like my left foot and my right foot in a given drawing? How much higher up is the position? And these are things that are, at the, well, the classes I take at the Animation Guild, because there are four people that are animators, they tend to not be sight size. Sight size is when you're looking at a flat object and you're just simply measuring the spatial, the spatial distances back and forth and trying to create a replication of what's in front of you. Figure drawing class for animators tend to revolve, <laughs> revolve around volume, being able to draw a cylinder that feels like it can exist in space a uh, a cube that you can turn around and look at from different sizes and if that cube doesn't look exactly like a photograph of a cube that you're replicating in front of it that's fine what's important is that it feels like a solid object that moves through space and being that I'm a comic book artist as well those things are much more useful to me than doing simple flat site size comparisons. But I realize that you can take something from every different approach to figure drawing and you can build it all together to take whatever works well for you. The most important thing is that whatever type of artwork you make, the studies you do are useful for you and you learn, you're able to learn from that. So, you know, learn from every process, learn from every method. Let's see, eh, there's nothing to say about these drawings. These are just sort of meh. I still can't seem to find the ones that I was setting aside that I was doing studies from. Oh, here we go, here we go. All right, so 
I sat down one night. I think I was just really tired and uh, had a long day at work and I just wanted to draw. Um, I wanted to do figure drawing. And so I just sat down and I took a bunch of drawings from class and this was me just drawing until I felt like I was happy with it. Just studying this drawing that did not capture everything that I wanted. And even this, I'm still not completely happy with it because I really don't feel like I got the sense of the pull from the armpit over to the upper part of the arm on this drawing. But this is one, you know, the, the next couple of ones I'll show you are me just sitting and doing studies for my, my poor figure drawings and trying to learn and and correct and analyze. Um, I don't know what's going on with this hand. It's a weird, like, honked up claw. Did not come out right at all. Um, and even the, the posture feels a bit off on this gesture. But I went through and I just was really trying to study the drapery and the fabric because I just felt like I did not get that at all for most of the poses. Um, let's see what's next here. Um, let's see here. And this one I made little diagrams. Um, talking about hands, trying to figure out how to break the hand into really simple shapes. Just your your palm as a square, an egg shape for this part of the thumb, the, the base of the thumb where it attaches. Because, you know, when you curl it over like this, you can very much feel it as an egg shape. When it's flattened, it looks like more of a wedge. But when it's in motion, it feels, it's well, it's in between an egg and a wedge. Um, but looking at it as an egg shape give me a little bit more of like I can move this around as a very simple conceptual volume for whatever pose I'm doing and then I can actually block in the details. So I was just sort of looking at the, the hand and making little notes because a lot of times I'll end up, I don't avoid drawing hands in figure drawing class. There's a class um, that I take that's specifically on drawing heads, hands, and feet. But when you're trying to draw the whole figure, a lot of times you don't have time to put in pay the attention to detail that hands require because hands are complicated. A hand is like a whole entire human body unto itself because it's got a, a torso and it's got four limbs and a head. So there's a lot going on with the hand. So being able to break it down into these simple forms so I can just sort of indicate and block in and have it not feel, have it just say a little bit more than what I have been doing. That's kind of the point of these notes is to pay attention to that. Um, anyway, rant, tangent. So this is again me sitting here studying, trying to define more of the volume, using the clothing to try and describe the way that the torso was moving back in space, using the buttons that go down the front, even though I didn't draw the individual buttons, but I drew the seam, using that as kind of like the linea alba, the line that runs down the center of the torso and through your belly button. And then being able to indicate, even using the clothing, indicating the shift in the direction of the hips, like the torso facing a little bit more this way and the uh, the pelvis facing a little bit more that way, using the seam that runs down the front of the pants and the, the zipper, change, using that to change direction. This one, I'm actually pretty happy with. Um, it felt like an improvement over what was going on in class. I still did not get the way that the fabric bunched up around the uh, around the elbow. I didn't convey that well, and that's something that I need to pay attention to in future classes. Um, while I'm still doing this costume and drape figure class, I've realized that I'm gonna start really focusing in on elbows and knees because I have trouble drawing those without fabric. They're just as difficult with fabric, if not more so. Um, so I need to pay a little bit more attention in describing those. Um, I think the drawing on this page, this, is not a study I did later. This is a study that I did during class. So, yeah, I do kind of like these. So I'll put these two in. Let's see here. Wow, this video is running long. But I've been drawing a lot. It's a lot of classes, a lot of drawing. All right, um, and then these last two. I'm pretty happy with how these came out. Um, really, the original drawings, 
This one felt a little bit more stiff, even though I got a nice curve in there. I was able to sort of add more character. And this is one of those things where I probably spent the most time of all of these on this top drawing, just sitting there and just trying to see how I can use the fabric to describe anatomy. The same way that you would put muscles on a figure once you do like basic simple volumes, using fabric to do the next level of that, to try and say, this is what the body's doing. This is how it's wrapping around this volume. Um, same goes for, for this one down here. So I'll put the, both of these in, into the class. I'm probably gonna try and photograph them together so I can put them in, in the same shot. And uh, yeah, the only thing here is just an old note from the, the drawing on, uh, from the video I did on skeletal anatomy comparison. I just keep that around because it's good for me to look at. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like and share them. Visit my resources page for free creativity tools and comic books at resources.jeremy.net. That's resources.gerimi.net. Also, visit my main website, jeremy.net where you can buy my comic books, art prints, and more. There's also links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media accounts. That's it for now. Go be creative.